I'm in here all alone. This is a live chat, a live stream. But if you do not see a scrolling chat going by, either under the video, like a scrolling moving chat, or to the right of the video, then this is not live for you anymore. Then that means that this is a recording of the live stream. And still watch it, even if it's a recording. Hi everybody who's coming in to the scrolling chat that I was just explaining to people who watch the recordings because I still get people underneath that if you have to comment underneath the video as if it's like a regular video then you are not watching it live. If you, you, you'll know you're watching it live if you see the chat moving otherwise it's not. It'll say live chat at the top of the chat box. It will not look like a regular standard video. That is how you know. So hello Janet and Maria and Kendra. How are you? Doing well, I hope. And Anita, how are you? I'm mixing up my clear gesso. Use a little clear gesso, a little regular gesso, and some black paint and make some black gesso and gesso my little canvas board with black paint for today's mixed media mashup. Because it's what I want to do. You do not have to do that if you are following along. You can do it however you want. But I personally want to do a black canvas. And I probably have an actual black canvas somewhere. I don't know where it is though offhand. Homemade gesso needs to be mixed a lot. And it usually has a lot of stuff on the bottom. Hi Dana, hi Susan, hi Sh uh, Sharon, and anybody else that's come in. Hi, Lindsay. Get off the bottom. No matter how much I mix this stuff, it doesn't like me. I don't use it enough, that's the problem. <laughs> We're doing mixed media mashup, so you're, we're going to be using the cards. So I don't know what we're making yet. All I know right now is I'm trying to just gesso my canvas because I'm using a canvas board. You do not have to use a canvas board. You can use a journal page. You can use a piece of cardstock. You can use whatever you want. But I am using this piece of canvas, like a six by six, I guess. But what I'm going to do right now is put some of my very runny clear gesso on here. It's probably more than enough. And I'm going to have to... Uh, this has been sitting so long I may have to make a new batch. With the homemade gesso, if you don't use it, you'll lose it type of thing. Why do I have little hairs all over my desk? Goodness! Hello Merlin Max! Hello Bella Nailed It! And hello Cheryl and Mark! and Ren, and anybody else who came in. I see some new faces. And anytime I do a live stream during normal daytime hours, instead of like a vampire that I am, <laughs> I see new people that come in and hang out. And if you are new, um, then come on in and hang out with us and get ready to do some art. You don't have to, but we are a lot of people will participate in the mixed media mashup because I will give you the prompts and tell you what to do. So all you need to do is just get a, some sort of substrate to work on, whether that's a piece of cardboard, a piece of um, 
uh, cereal box, a canvas if you got it, journal, art journal. I made way too much, but I don't care. Now we're going to add some paint. I was just going to use the clear gesso because that would have given me a better black gesso because this is not going to be so good because it's already got white paint in it, which is going to make it gray. But to be on the, I got some printer ink and I can add a few drops of that. That'll help darken it up. I do that as well. Hmm. It's not going to make it dark, dark, but I had a nice dark black gesso, but I don't know what happened to it. A homemade one that I made that was really nice and dark. I have no clue what happened to it. So I'm just going to slap this on here. It doesn't have to be perfectly black because we're going to go over it anyway. I'm going to go over it probably with black paint at some point. So, or I can just go over it with black paint. I don't really care. I just thought I'd try. I just thought I'd try. I'm not looking at the chat right now. So if you're talking to me, hold on a second. I will look in a minute. dropping everything and I'd make this really textury but it would take too long to dry and I'm sure nobody wants to sit here and wait for my paint to dry <laughs> I don't think so you'd be like I'm out of here lady I ain't waiting 35 45 minutes for your paint to dry who you think I am nobody got time for that Even doing the little side of the canvas. Who's done with what? Done and done. What are we done with? Oh, hitting the like button. Yes, hit the like button. Ren, you hit the jackpot at Marshall's and got, ooh, you got a glass cutting board for eight bucks. That's cool. Like for crafting or for cooking? All right, we're gonna try to let that dry. I'm gonna try to clean up this mess. Um, let's see, do I have anything to put it on so I can not let it go to waste? I don't care if it goes to waste that much, but, ooh, I do have something. Wait a minute, where is it? There it is. I have something to put it on. Look at that. And I'll get my thing back out. I'll use this. And I will scrape it on here. And make this for another time. I'll just do a textury background because I can let this dry. Oh, that was a pleasant sound of the palette knife hitting the glass. All right, you need to move out of the way. You are welcome, Maria. I don't know what you're thanking me for, though. <laughs> oh, you mean for doing the live stream at an earlier time? You are welcome. I decided that every now and again I would do that because I know that I get a lot of messages saying that they, you know, people that that missed the live stream because I do it at such an odd ball time because I am a natural night owl and most people are asleep or in the UK maybe at work or something when I'm well yeah asleep really because I do it at like what 10 or 9, 9 10 o'clock at night and for you guys that's like 4 o'clock in the morning Wow, I made a mess and we haven't even started yet. All right, let me go find a place for this to dry. I made a big mess. 
I need somebody to clean it up. Any volunteers? I need somebody who I can just hire to go behind me and just automatically clean up my mess. I think I've mentioned this before. Like all I have to do is sit back every time I make a little mess and they just come right away like little minions. And they just come over and they're like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and they clean it all up. Like automatically without me even having to say anything. I think we all need that, don't we? I'm sure I'm not the only one. All right, we're going to put this over here because I have a few happy mails to show real quick. I hope that's okay. You mind if I show a happy mail before we get too started? I got to wait for my paint to dry anyway. My homemade ridiculous gesso that turned into more of a soupy mess than anything. You're going to duck out at 1.30 for a meeting? I don't know if that's going to be allowed. We might not let you back in. <laughs> so hello to anybody that I did not say hello personally to. Just know that I am helloing to you from my heart. And today I'm snacking on grapes, organic grapes. Is anybody else snacking on anything? Has anybody else had uh, the the moon cookies from Trader Joe's? Because let me tell you something, those cookies, I would die for them. They are the best cookies on the planet. They're so good. Hi, Odette. Hi, Lynn. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some happy mail. Um, so the poodle, somebody, I, I'm assuming it's somebody from the poodle pack. I don't know because they did not put a name on it. They sent me this message. There was no address. It just had this really cute thing. It says, may love and peace. Um, fill, I guess it's fill your heart even when it's broken. I know it's from Ch um, 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 Canada because it says Canada post, but I don't know who it's from. So, but I will show you what I got. I can't properly thank them. So if they're watching this, thank you very much for my lovely happy mail. Um, I really appreciate it, but I wish I knew your name. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Look at the colors on that. It looks like it might be alcohol ink or brushos or something. Uh, I can't tell. I want to say brushos or... Yeah, it's probably brushes by the way it looks, but I'm not positive, but it looks really cool. Really liking that. And then I got a piece of canvas, which is really cool. A nice, awesome piece of canvas to create on. A piece of glittery fun foam. It's got some glitter on it. Um, a ticket that, to the Castrol Raceway from 2011, which I think is really cool. I love it. And then these are, CD, I have these, and I've done something like this before in the past. CD envelope thingies, I have some of these, and I've done something similar. And it's really kind of cool to put them in like a journal or to make into like a little, uh, what do you call them? Flip books. But yeah, she put pretty paper in there. It's really cute. And then... On this side, there's like a little piece in there, and then there is another piece of paper on the other side. I don't know if it opens. It's thick. I think she glued two pieces together. It's really cute. Thank you, whoever you are. I really appreciate it. This is really sweet. Very cute. And then there is this awesome book pages, which are like, I don't know of what like Buddhist or something it looks like I don't know but it's really awesome and I love the colors I love the illustration illustrations are really cool I'm assuming this is yeah it's got to be uh, Buddhism and then there's some more book page here oh that she like gessoed and really cute 
And then here's some more of that Buddhist book. I love it. It's got to be Harry Krishna's Buddhist something like that. But it's really cool. I love the illustrations. They're so colorful. And then there is some uh, really big paper, which looks like it might have been, I don't know what, like a wrapping paper of some sort, but it's kind of thick, so I'm not sure. But it's really cool. I like the butterfly. It's very pretty. I definitely am digging that. I love ephemera. And then there's this, which I think is some sort of package, because it's kind of scored. So let me see. If I bend it, it's sort of scored. I think I might have to score it more. I kind of see the score marks, but I don't think they're bendable easily, so I'd have to go back over them. But I don't know what it is. It's some sort of envelope or package or something. I don't know. And then this is a sticky back. These are sticky back. Look how cool. Very cool. They're labels. So each label is a part of the picture. I thought that was really cool. Same with this one. Very cool. And then this, she must have done vinyl letters. And then this is the sticky part. So I can like stick this down and use it as a stencil or I can just stick it down and use it as like, as like, you know, a sticker kind of. So very cool. Thank you to whoever you are for this lovely package. I really enjoyed it. It's fabulous. I thought something else was inside of there, but it's not. It was just my imagination. And then somebody else that sent me a happy mail who asked me to keep them nameless. Um, she sent me art stones. Yeah. Oh, my back. She sent me art stone, mini art stones and then art stones, which I've never used. But when I got them, I wasn't expecting, like I've seen other people use them. And I thought, always thought they were heavy, but they're not. And me and Secret were talking about it. And we think that these are. Do you know that, um, you know when you buy potting soil, there's those little white things inside of the potting soil? That's what we think this is, those little white things. And you could buy these, apparently Secret says you could buy these, just the little stones that are inside the potting soil, to, I guess, to put in your soil to air it out. But I think that's what these are because they feel like them. Because I remember as a kid, I used to pick them out of my mom's potting soil and sit there and, and mush them in my nail. And these feel exactly like that. So I think that's what they are, but they're cool. Nonetheless, I'm looking forward to playing with those. Who knows? I might use them today. And then I got this, which I have never seen before. And I looked it up and it looks really cool. Um, it's sticky paper on both sides and you can like die cut with it and stuff. I thought that was really cool. And lastly, no, not lastly, second to lastly, the person who sent this to me, I, I mean, I know who it is. I, they just asked me not, we have been talking back and forth in email, but they asked me not to say their name, but they must have watched my video where I was saying how I didn't really have any um, 3D, you know, the 3D foam things, these things, I guess, what are they called? 3D dots? Yeah, 3D dots. So that was awesome because, yes, I definitely, definitely needed these. So that was very cool. Very cool. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And then lastly, she also watched my video, and it might have been the same video, where I struggled with the um, embossing powder because I only had UD. So she sent me to make sure I had embossing powder so I wouldn't be able, so I wouldn't bitch about not having it the next time. She sent me a bright white, you know, regular fine embossing powder, a black super fine embossing powder, and then a what an opaque bright white ultra, like ultra high or ultra thick. So this is like a UD kind of, but it's a white, which is really kind of cool. So definitely awesome. Thank you so much for those. So yeah, so that was a good happy mail. I was very excited about that. And then, um... One more thing, I 
was able to go to Tuesday morning because I, on the, so I went to Trader Joe's on, when was that? Is that Sunday or Saturday? Sunday. I went to Trader Joe's to go grocery shopping on Sunday. And when I was getting dressed, I put, I found, I went to the back of my closet because like right now I don't fit in any of my clothes. And I had a couple pairs of jeans in the back of my closet that were not, you know, they were, they were still too loose on me, but they were wearable. They were from like years ago from like, I don't know, six or seven or years ago or so. And so I, I went to the back of my closet. I'm like, Oh yeah, I have these black jeans and I put them on. And I put my hand in the pocket and I found two $20 bills. And I know exactly where they came from too. Because back in the day when I used to go out with my friends and we'd go out drinking or I'd go on a date with somebody or whatever. Um, this is back when I dated like six years ago. Uh, I would take like 20 bucks or 40 bucks and put it in my pocket in case of emergency. And I somehow didn't have my purse or something happened. And so I'd stick just cash in my pocket or if I was wearing a skirt or something, I'd put it in my bra just so I would have it. And I must have forgotten to take it out of my pocket and I found it. And then I ended up going on a mad dash looking through all my pants pockets, all my jacket pockets to see if I had any more money. And I didn't. Oh, I found a dollar. That's not true. I did find a dollar bill. But I took 20 of that dollars and I went to Tuesday morning. The rest of it I put toward my groceries. But I decided to stop at Tuesday morning because it was like literally across the street from Trader Joe's. And I picked up a couple of things. Like this for $1.99. It's like a pouncy brush kind of. Um, I can take it off of the thing. What did I just hit that was all wet? Oh my canvas it's still wet I slip, hit my finger on it so this is like a you know like a pouncy brush I thought this would be pretty cool Stacy my white and black gesso crackles when it dries how come it does this is it homemade gesso gesso it might do that because you might have too much calcium uh, carbonate or mar marble dust in it if it's homemade. Um, let's see. I got, where'd the other one go? Hey now. Oh, there it is. I got this one, which I already took out of the package because I was showing it to somebody. I don't know where the package is, but it came in a package similar to this in a plastic. But it's really cool because look at the texture on it. It's like a Brillo pad almost, if it'll ever focus. Focus. Can you see it? It's very, very textury. I thought this would be really cool for like pouncing paint on. Um, and then mostly the rest of the stuff that I got, oh, aside from this, I got some of that red line tape, but it's the thicker one. I love this tape. Really good double-sided tape. Um, what can I add to it then to make it stop? Add a little more water and glue. Just add, you know, a few squirts of glue, a little bit of water, and keep going back and forth until you until you water it down a little bit. I don't know what size you've got yours in and what how much you've used. So I'm just gonna say experiment, add a little bit of glue, a little bit of water. Um, and I've got some ephemera because I love when Trader, yeah, Trader Joe's, good Lord. Tuesday morning, I haven't been in Tuesday morning in like over a year or so. Um, I love when they have like ephemera and stuff and this was like this is all like sea life type of type of borders or strips or whatever and it has like seashells and seahorses and fishies you know and I love that because you know if I do a mermaid thing and then they have pirates these are glitter rub-ons and I love these and I want I got two of them because they were 49 cents and I want to do like a treasure chest I have like a treasure chesty type of box and I want to do it in a very pirate theme. 
And then I got this one because it had a flamingo, and I love flamingos right now. They're so cute. And I just thought the whole thing was really cute. Very cute little ephemera stickers, whatever it is. And then there's some K and Company stickers from New York. And since I'm from New Jersey, pretty much I'm from New York, whatever. <laughs> I I go to I used to go to New York a lot, so I loved New York. So I got some stickers. And which you know what? I don't even need stickers. It's ridiculous that I would even get stickers at all because I have a lot of stickers. But I have an addiction to stickers. I can't help it. And then I got these, which I love these things. And they're those like acetate type of framey things, which I'm sure you guys have seen before. Um, these, where they're clear. I think they have a film on top of them. Do they? Sometimes they have like a film. Nope, maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, there's different designs here on the back. Very cool. They were only 99 cents. And then, I already have some of these, but they were only 49 cents. So I got a bunch more. They had the yellow one, the blue one. These are those smash book things and I like to stick these in journals as little journaling cards because they're awesome and for 49 cents they had some really cool ones and I just had to get them. They're really cute and I love them so I got one of each color and I think, nope that's not it, uh, a K and Company ephemera pack and two things of wire which were on clearance. They were $1.99 marked to 60% off. So they were like 30 something cents. I got purple and gold. And then that's it. This is just the package that this came in. It was like this. So, and it's by Art C. I don't know. Never heard of them. So, yeah. I thought that was fun. I'm just going to go over there. Oh, oh yeah, there was there is one more thing. I forgot. Oh, I forgot, I forgot. There's one more thing. So they have this paper. It was Downtown Abbey or whatever, Downton Abbey, whatever it's called. I don't watch the show, and I almost passed it by because I'm like, well, I don't watch that show. But then I flipped through it really quick, and I'm glad I did because the paper is amazing. It's so pretty. It's just really pretty pattern paper that, you know, I don't know how it has anything to do with the show. I guess that's how their house is decorated or whatever. The set. I don't know. But I thought it was so pretty. Double-sided paper. And it was only $6.99. I was like, yeah, I'm on top of it. This one's my favorite. With the peacock feathers and the little sparkle. Oh, love it. And then there's this one, which I love too, with the birds. Oh, I just love it. I don't know squat about this show don't really like shows that are set in that time period, even though I love that time period for its, you know, vintageiness. I don't like the shows that are set in those time periods. But I thought that paper was pretty badass. Anyway, anywho, let's see if we can get this to dry, because now we've been messing around for so long that I'm sure you guys are bored. Okay. Yeah, it's probably the wallpaper they use. Yeah, something like that. You have some trolls in the loose. Oh, really? Kendra, did you get them? Good Lord. I have a moderator. She's in here. It just takes time for, you know, them to get to it, but, yeah, I don't know, what were they saying? I don't even know. Were they, like, little kids, probably? I don't know, it seems like more and more, um, every now and again, I used to never get people like that in my live streams. I don't know what, if they're looking for crafty live streams to troll in, I don't know, it's weird. 
Kendra got him. <laughs> we sicked her. We sicked Kendra on him. Oh, bad words they were saying? Oh. Wow, it's amazing to me that somebody has that much time on their hands. <laughs> it really is amazing to me. Cheryl, can I make you a, a I'm going to make you a moderator. Just to be there. And Janet, you should be a moderator already. I don't know why you're not, but I'm going to make you one. So Cheryl and Janet are now moderators. We'll put Odette. We'll make you a moderator. So that if you see anybody, because, you know, these little baby children have no lives. Oh, I got one, too. I don't know what's the deal with these people. Like, seriously. I mean, really? Do you not have a life and that's all you know how to do is to go in and act like ch Like, seriously, how bored do you have to be? Good lord. Maybe they need to go get a job or something. Or a life. Or get out of their parents' basement. Yeah, I deleted them. I saw them that QW, whatever his name was. They they have no life. That's the problem. They're sad little children. It amazes me that, like Janet just said, one of them was in his mid-twenties. Who, what person in their mid-twenties, like, why? Are you got to be the lamest person on the planet, if that's all you have time to do in your mid-twenties, is to go into a chat, uh, a, a live stream with a bunch of crafting ladies and cause trouble. Like seriously, you've got to be probably the lamest loser on the planet. Because I can't imagine. In my 20s, I was out having fun. I was with my friends. I was working. I was going and doing things. Like I had no time to sit around and, and screw around like that. And do stupid childish things. Like that amazes me. I figured they were just all like 12 and 13 year olds that, you know, just got off their mom's tit. And they have nothing better to do. But to, to see that it's somebody in their 20s. That just makes me feel sad for them. That's pretty sad. That's really sad. Like, I I don't get it.
what's even sadder is he probably doesn't have <laughs> they probably don't have girlfriends or anybody to so they're not getting laid apparently and this is the only thing they've got in their lives <laughs> uh, it's pretty sad <laughs> Let me go, let me go into a craft live stream and mess with a bunch of old ladies because I'm not getting laid. How sad is that? Uh, that's funny. Anyway, you guys got it under control. As soon as you see it, you're like, bye. I mean, what's the point? They're just going to get blocked after the first thing they say. So why do they bother? Really stupid. Anyway. Um, it's a little wet still because I laid it on really thick and I probably shouldn't have because I'm sure you guys are like, come on, lady, get over with it. Get on with it. And I'm trying. I'm really trying. Ugh, mess. All right, I'm going to pick a card now, finally. Um, did I not take the things out of the cards? What did I do? picked up one of the ones to use for the game like use random box and all that crap that's not what I Ugh, I gotta pick all those out now great I think I got them all out. I think. Okay. Good lord. There's a lot of them, and every time I always end up picking a million of them. Okay. Anyway, add paper. We'll do that one first. This is still wet. Who's wearing the troll perfume? It's probably me. I haven't showered. I need a shower today after I'm done. So they probably smell my pheromones and they're coming after me they're attracted to me they think i'm sexy that's what they that's what it is they want me oh i just stuck my hands in gesso again no no back first Alright, add, what did it, add paper, so I'm going to add this, it was given to me, and it's really cool. Yeah, they, they do, they like us older women. They can't get girlfriends of their own because they're too immature. So, 
They come after us older ladies. They like little mature girls. Because they're too lame to get their own girlfriends. What can I say? They want me. I'm not putting a lot on because it's a small canvas so I'll try to work slow because I know most of you aren't using a canvas this small you're probably using a bigger piece of paper or a journal page who knows maybe you're using something this small I could be wrong for crying out loud. Really? If you did have a big one, sweetheart, I promise you, you wouldn't be here right now. That's the problem. If you had a big wiener, you wouldn't be here right now. That's why you're here, because you have a small wiener. Newsflash. People with big wieners aren't sitting in a chat room with a bunch of old ladies saying that they have a big wiener. How stupid do you think we are? And trust me, I have a bigger wiener than you do. Goodness, the trolls are out. Little baby childs. Good Lord. I think it's hilarious, actually. Makes me flattered because they're coming out and they're wanting me to do things to them. They like us older women. If you're in here listening, give me your phone number. I'll give you a call later. <laughs> I'll teach you things that your hand could never teach you. <laughs> Good Lord bunch of little babies. Little babies. Poor, depraved little children with no lives. They need mama to teach them how to do it. <laughs> Let me know um, if you need me to wait longer to pull the next card. yelling at Joe. <laughs> Joe's kicking ass and taking names. <laughs> well, we need some pepper, uh, Janet, because we got to sprinkle something on it so that it'll sneeze and show itself enough for even us to get the tweezers in there to get it. That's the problem. You need to have some pepper on hand, too. It's got to come out of its little shell. Eh, let them do whatever they want. Just keep blocking them, but I don't care if they come in. It just shows me that they have no life, no penis. It always amazes me how people hide behind a keyboard. It makes them such a big man. Am I dry? Kind of, but not really.
Yeah, if we ignore them, sure. <laughs> they don't care about ignoring. Okay, I'm going to pick another card since nobody objected. Texture paste. All right, well, I wasn't prepared for that. Hold on, let's see. Image transfer. Um, crackle medium. There it is. Nope, that's sand paste. I don't want that. Where's the other one at? There it is. That's what I want. This stuff dries pretty fast. I'm not going to make use it thick. I'm not going to use it very thick. Should I get a stencil? Uh, probably. Let me see. Since it's easy to get to. This one's good. Little circuit board. Yeah, I prepped it with, well, it's gray gesso. <laughs> it's like a gr dark gray gesso. It's not really black, but it's all, I just put together some black paint into some white gesso and made like a gray gesso but yeah that's all I did you don't have to do that you can use your white gesso or whatever you want you don't have to do what I did I just felt like changing it up today and doing something a little different well hello don't get stuck I don't know well don't do that get Get out of there. I was having fun this morning looking at like RV lots and ha little houses kind of. Um, they have these things here where, because um, I know some of you are from the, the UK, but they have these things here where it's kind of like an RV, but it's got what's called a, uh, what is it called? Oh, crap. I always forget the name of it. A cover over? Um, I don't know. It's kind of like what they do is they take an RV and they park it permanently and they build a structure around it. And they're inexpensive. And they're really perfect for me. They're small. I mean, because obviously they're the size of an RV with an addition on it. Let's put it that way. And some of them look like houses and you can't tell that there's an RV in there. And the price is really good on them. And um, I'm looking at getting one of those when I sell my house. I really want one. And I found one that I threw, that me and Secret both uh, thought was really cute. Um, and it was only like, what was it, 54000 which or something like that. It wasn't bad at all. That would be about what I would spend on a lot in an RV. But this would be a lot in RV plus an extra room, which obviously would be my craft room. And I wouldn't have to worry about insulating a shed or doing anything like that. Oh, that looks awesome. Holy crap, does that look cool. All right, I got to wipe this off because it's drying on there. Um, so I am, I talked to a realtor in, um, Georgia today because I called about one of them. And so she's going to keep sending me different ones that she finds through her, obviously, because she's a realtor, she can get all kinds of listings so that I can keep looking and just keeping an eye on what's going on. She says, because right now that type of living is kind of a hot thing. Crap, I bent my stencil. Um, she says it probably the one that I like won't stay on the market long, which is like boo because I really, really like it. And it is so cute. I also found another little house that was really cute too. But of course, I can't afford a $100,000 house right now. But 
I showed it to Janet too because it was just so cute. It was just so adorable the way she had it decorated on the inside. Oh my god, it was so cute. And um, yeah, so I loved that little place. It was like a little cottage. It was so adorable. Um, but anyway, back to the other one, the RV one. Um, I can only wish that it would stay on the market long enough for me to sell my house and get it because, <sighs> man, it was so cool. It was so perfect. It's in a gated community. It's in a gated resort community. And it does not, it, it, I, you can't tell that there was ever an RV inside of it because they surrounded it completely, um, with like another kind of building. And even on the inside, they redid the entire RV because you know how RVs have a bedroom, a kitchen, a living room, a bathroom. Well, they redid the entire RV. So it's all kitchen and then the bedroom. That's it. So the whole rest of the RV besides the bedroom is kitchen. So the kitchen is humongous for for a, you know, a place that small. It's a very big kitchen which I love. And then the addition that they put on is a bed another bedroom and um like a living room which I would turn into my craft room and the bedroom that they added on I would make into my living room and then I would take the RV bedroom that's still left on the RV you know there was the kitchen and the bedroom um, I would take the RV bedroom because I don't need a big bedroom but I would want the craft room to be the large living room that was there because that was perfect and it had all windows it was so pretty and out all the windows is like all real pretty wooded area there's a deck off the back like a big deck off the back um it's just so cute really cute really nice area i can only hope that that's still available in two months when i have this house sold because ugh, if i had the money now i'd just go there and move in so cool so yeah that's what i was doing today and last night I just need something little. I don't need nothing big for me at all. As long as I have enough room for a craft room, that's all I care about. I don't care if I have a bedroom or not. I don't care nothing. I don't care. I don't need big. I never ever needed big. We got this house because we got a good deal on it. Not because we wanted a big house. But what's funny is we have this house. It's a five bedroom house. We don't utilize most of it. I live in my craft room. I am never out of my craft room unless I go to bed. Even I eat in here. I mean, I'm used to being in a small space. That's what I'm comfortable in. So this house was kind of always a waste. The only time we ever used our finished basement was when we had a party. That's it. And we have a big, big finished basement. We, I just never utilized it. Contingent on, yeah, I guess I could, right? Make an offer contingent on selling my house, but I don't know if they would take that because the, like the, like the realtor said, the community, the, um, those type of places are going fast right now. So I don't think anybody's going to want to wait a couple of months. Hi, Crafty Samarita. So, all right, anyway, I better put the heat gun on this for a second. Tigger's bedroom is whatever room I'm in. <laughs> so he'll have he'll have his bed in, in the craft room or wherever he wants it. Right now he's not home. I'm missing him like crazy. I keep thinking I see him. I keep thinking I hear him. But he's getting groomed right now because he looked like a woolly mammoth. He looked horrible. And he needs to go to the vet and get some teeth pulled. And I couldn't, you know, and hopefully we're going to be able to do that soon. Like I'm hoping like within the next like three or four weeks. 
But I could, I said to, I told Chris, I said, we cannot take him to the vet looking like this. He looks horrible. He has so much hair and he hates having a lot of hair. So he's going to feel so much better today when he comes home from the groomers. Yeah, the problem with staying on somebody else's property is it's not my property. And if something happens and somebody sells their house or somebody moves or somebody just says, oh, I don't feel like having you there, then I'm screwed. I kind of want some security because that's been like the biggest problem in my life is like when me and Chris were renting, we always were renting, you know, and it was like, but if the person that owned the house felt like selling their house all of a sudden we had to look for another place to live and that happened several times and one of the times the house got foreclosed on that we were renting because the landlord was not taking the money that we were giving them and paying their mortgage instead they were pocketing it and so we got a thing in the mail that said that the house was being foreclosed on and we called the landlord and we're like what the hell and so that's when we ended up renting this house that we're living in. And then like a year later after renting it, the owner said they wanted to sell. And I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. But then they said they wanted to sell it to us. And we were like, fine, we'll take it because I don't want to move again. That was the biggest thing. We only moved into this house because we couldn't, we didn't have time to look for anything else. Not that I would have wanted to look for anything else because this house, house was an amazing deal. It was a five bedroom house almost 3,000 square feet for $900 a month. I mean, they were way underselling this house or under renting it. Um, so, and then when we bought it from them, we got it for 140,000. So it was quite the deal and we couldn't pass up on it. But, um, you know, the thought of the, I mean, if I tried to live on just somebody else's property, I'd have to hook up sewage, I'd have to hook up water, I'd have to hook up cable, electric, I'd also have to have some sort of building that was for my craft room. I mean, that's a lot to put on somebody else's property that is not a permanent thing. You know what I mean? It's hard for me to just go, oh, okay. It's like, there's a lot involved. If I'm going to have an RV, it's not just going to be an RV. It's going to be easy peasy. A lot has to go into it. It would end up costing me more money to have all that stuff hooked up and probably frustration on the people that own the property because I have to do all this stuff. It wouldn't be worth it. You know what I mean? So as much as that would be great, I just, it would be easier for me to just buy a lot w with one of these RVs things already on it. Everything's already hooked up. Everything's ready to go. And it'll end up actually being cheaper for me that way. Now, if you want to sell me a half acre of land for really, really cheap, then we can talk. Because <laughs> then I can put my own on there. But I'd want to own my own piece of land because I don't ever want to feel like I'm going to have to go somewhere. You know, like I'm going to get kicked out. That's like a fear of mine because I, you know, had to deal with a lot when I was a kid with my mom. And like I always had a fear of people taking my stuff or taking my place to live or not being with a place to live. And I don't want to have to worry about that anymore. Alright, I'm done. Does anybody have any objections to me pulling another card? Hi, Ren. Yeah, we don't, we barely ever get trolls. So that's actually, you know, we don't usually get them like that. That's a rare, a rarity. Hi, Kelly. It's not perfectly dry, but it's dry enough. I think that looks cool. The first cards were add paper and texture paste. 
So that's all we've done. I just gessoed my canvas with a, with a dark, like a black color um, beforehand, but you don't, you can use white. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be black. Um, you just need to add paper and texture paste. Oh, really? In five months you'll own it? That's cool. Yeah, I saw some mobile homes, too, that were on a nice piece of property um, that I was looking at. Modular homes and stuff like that. They were, um, some of them were okay. Uh, there were some really nice ones, but they were a little bit higher in the price range. I'm trying to keep it as low as possible because I don't want to suck up all the money just on finding a place to live because I'm going to need money for other things like a car and medical stuff. I've got medical bills that are haunting me that I can't pay. Okay, metallic paints. Metallic paints. Hmm, I wonder if I, this can handle like some rub. What do you call it? Metallic luster is on it. I wonder. Let's see. No, I'm not looking to stay in Nashville. Um, I'm actually looking in Georgia because there's a lot of pretty area in Georgia that I think would be nice um, for me. I'm not necessarily looking to stay in Tennessee. I'm trying to go a little bit more towards the east rather than being in this area. Where can I find my teal color? There it is. Jeez Louise. I had to dig out 9,000 things just to get my purple and my teal. not that interested in staying in Tennessee and in Georgia there's such beautiful country like beautiful resort mountainy type of country I feel like I was on vacation all the time real pretty and plus I'd only be a few hours from the beach um, which is nice yeah this is gonna be hard to do because it's not very thick texture well that's okay We'll just add some anyway. Yeah, I just want to own something of my own because, and not with somebody else, like this house is owned with Chris and, you know, I just want something where nobody can ever tell me I have to leave, a breakup can't make me have to sell my house, you know what I mean? Like, it, I want something that no matter what, it's mine and I'd prefer to have it paid outright, like pay cash for it when I sell the house so that I don't have any payments aside from my own utilities. This way, if I get sick again, which I likely will, <laughs> I don't have to worry about, oh my God, you know, like I'm in this financial bind because all of this has really like been an eye opener for me and really, really, you know, just made me realize that, you know, having an illness and trying to, 
just live life without a second income because I don't plan on having a husband ever again. I don't definitely don't want a husband ever again. So, I mean, it's not, it's not fun to try to do it by yourself, but I need to try because I don't, I don't want to be in a situation. I don't want to be in that situation ever again where I'm depending on somebody else and having to get yelled at because I asked them for help or whatever. Alright, that's good enough. No, it isn't a way to live, for sure. That's why I'm, I'm doing everything I can to prevent that from ever happening again. This way it'll be my property, and nobody could ever take it away from me. And then eventually, especially if I get a lot that's got, you know... Uh, you know, because I watched, um, you could see the, the uh, you could see, like, from the beginning, if you go, like, on Zillow.com or any of those sites, you could see how much that house, or whether it's an RV lot or whatever, has sold for in the past and watch the growth of it and watch how much, you know, um, watch how much the, the, um, yeah, I can speak, um, equity. That's what I'm trying to think of. Watch how much equity that property has gained over the years. And quite a few of these properties that I'm looking at within five to 10 years go up a very significant amount. So let's say in 10 years, I don't want to live there anymore. I can sell it and make a like probably a good $40,000 off of the property. You know what I mean? Like that's worth it to me something that I, it's an investment that I'm, I know I'm going to, I know I'm going to get a return on. I know I'm going to get money and, you know, if I want to sell it and, you know, go rent an apartment somewhere, let's say, or whatever. Um, you know, I know that I can do that. I have that to fall back on because these properties are going up and up and up in value so much. And even the realtor I talked to today said the same thing. She goes, these properties are becoming an investment because people, more and more people are tired of living in large houses that they can't afford. So they're moving into these smaller, either tiny houses or modular homes or mobile homes or RVs. And they're doing that to save money because they can't, live the uh, any other way and that's why these properties are getting to be so hot right now which is why right now is the time to buy them before they get too hot and they start going way up in price but that's why it's a you know they're they're right now the the hot way to live you know the trendy thing to do is to get one of these smaller places it used to be looked down on if you have lived in a trailer or if you lived in a you know, whatever. I never looked down on people because I lived in a trailer once. It was actually a beautiful trailer in a really, really, I only lived there for like six months, but um, I was staying with a friend. It was gorgeous there. This park that, that the, uh, that the mobile homes were in uh, or, or whatever they were called, mobile trailers or whatever. Um, they had like an exotic petting zoo and they had like, it was fancy. It was a fancy place, but you know, I, I don't care. I'll live anywhere as long as it's clean. No, it's not white trash. It's not white trash. I think that's such BS to say that it's white trash. It's not white trash. It's called being smart. Living cheaper than you need to. Or sometimes you have to. But regardless, living not living above your means is like no way to live. I'll show you a close-up of it. I just rubbed 
I couldn't keep it from going on the background so because it's so low it's not a lot of texture it's just it's a very slight texture so any pressure was making it hit the background but that's okay because I'm about to add a bunch of other things to it so I'm gonna pick another card finger paint well I kinda just did that <laughs> but if you guys wanna do that go ahead um, you can do something in finger paint if you want I'm going to pick another card paint or ink sprays um, do I want to paint or ink spray maybe let me see if I have a black ink up here or something. I think I do. Yeah. Let's try this one. This one's black with a little shimmer. Maybe I'll drip it. Do some dripping. That looks cool. That looks cool. <clears throat> My parents had money when I was a kid, but they never gave me any of it. So I might as well have been poor. But I moved out of my house when I, as soon as I turned 18, I was out. I was like, I'm Audi 5000. Cause I got out and then I lived, I literally would just, I literally chose to be homeless than to live with my parents because they were so horrible. So I lived pretty much, yeah, I was homeless. I lived in my car. I lived under a bridge <laughs> until I got on my feet and got, you know, rented a little house and, you know, eventually, well, first I rented a studio apartment then I rented a house and this, that, and the other. I did anything I had to do, but for a while I was homeless and I did not care. I was happy. I was so happy. I was free. I felt free for the first time in my entire life. Your house is beautiful, Janet. Or just the area alone. I mean, I didn't really see your house house too much, but the area you live in is so pretty. Same here, Shell. Same here. My dad and also my mom too, but, you know, mostly my dad. hit this with the heat gun. I'm going to pick another card. Stencil. Uh, I already did stencil. With the texture paste. And I don't think I can get any more stenciling on here. 
But if you haven't done it yet and you want to stencil and you've got room, go ahead and stencil. But I think I'm going to leave mine as is. Well, just not stenciling. Yes, I do know that I rolled over 10,000 subbies. I said something about it on my Facebook, but I didn't say something in the group. But, um, yeah, that's pretty awesome that I reached 10,000. That's crazy. Thanks everyone. Yeah, and give it a like if you haven't already. Oh, Lindsay lives 20 minutes from you? Oh, that's awesome. You need to go and hang out one day. Maybe when I come to visit, we'll all get together. How many in what group? In, in the chat here or in the group on Facebook? I'm assuming you mean in here. Hi, Suzanne. I'm going to pick another card. Add non-porous elements. Okay. That means like anything like metal, glass, plastic. That's what non-porous is. And let's see. What do I have? I got, I got some metals. Hmm. No, I want to save that. There's certain things I'm saving for other things. Hmm, let's see. What do I have? That looks kind of like it could be used for that. Whoa, get back here. Hmm. Hmm. I think I found what I'm going to use. It took me long enough, didn't it? Hmm. 
right, I need to get a couple more things from back here. Sorry, I'm missing the chat. I don't, I'm not paying attention to the chat. So if, if you have something to say to me directly, just put it put it in all caps so that I'll see it. Um, good Lord. Thick ass jump rings. Oh, damn. Well, I may not be getting that out anytime soon. My hands are not strong enough for jump rings that strong. Good lord. Really? Just for a bracelet? Never in my life. Oh, damn. Oh, I got it off, but I had to, it kind of broke off, but that's good. Oh, that's good to know that these will break. Good. And I'll just break the little, there we go. Good deal. Because those jump rings, holy crap. They're like superpower jump rings. And I just want the, and they're, I thought they were metal. They're actually plastic. They're like, and the little, little top where the loop is, is coming right off, which is good, good, good. This one's metal. This one ain't going to come off unless I cut it with some cutters, which I'll do. I don't care. So if you, if you need me to pick another card because I'm taking too long, I don't mind because this is probably going to be close to my finishing point anyway. So I don't mind picking another card. Is this jump ring going to be a pain in the butt too? Well, it would help if I could find the end to it. I need my glasses. Where the hell are my glasses? I can't see worth it. Jack snot right now. There they are. Here it is. Okay. Put on the glasses and instantly able to see. Pretty remarkable. All right, that one was much easier to get off. Okay. Those little charms I'll save. Okay, so we want to probably paint these. Is this open or something? No. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's try the spray. Where'd that spray go? There it is. Let's see. No, oh, that ain't gonna work. I thought maybe it would. No, it's not. I thought maybe, but no. I need paint, paint. Regular paint, paint, paint. Paint, 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 paint. Actually, you know what I wanna do? Oh, I know what I wanna do. Let's see how many times I can change my mind.
you had to let your 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 child help you, Lynn. That's funny. Let's do this. Let's use the patina effect that I got. And uh, give this a try. No, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Get off of there. Dang it. We'll make it coppery. And and then we'll add the other effects on it. What's the gold? It's patina of, dang it. It's patina effect paste by Finnebar. Um, I got it in Happy Mail. Like, oh, I don't know, two weeks ago maybe. Oh, I keep dropping everything. <laughs> oh, frustrating. My hands are gold. Well, it's actually like a brass color. It's not really gold, but. I guess on camera it kind of looks gold. Stop it. But you do one step and then you add other colors to give it like a patina effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add some of it randomly on here as well. that. All right. other color on. No, that's not the, this isn't the rusty one. This is the patina. There's the rust one and then there's the patina. This is the patina. I haven't tried this one yet. I got it a couple weeks ago, but I haven't had a chance to try it. So exciting. hit these with the heat gun a little bit. If you want me to pick another card, just let me know. Oh, you got your laptop working?
That's good. All right, now I think use this one or this one or both. I think I'm just going to use this one for this specific look I'm going for. I think it'll go better if I just use that. Hi, Jane. Leave it to you to not know what time you're supposed to be here. <laughs> I think Jane's going to be late to her own funeral. I better be careful because she's going to want to cut off my hands. All right. Sorry, can't see what I'm doing. I'm just pouncing the stuff on kind of in the areas where I put the brass paint. I'm just putting it wherever. That's that. Actually, I might put some on these because I might use some of these. But I'll do those as I'm going to put them on so I don't waste them. Let's see, I've got some brass gears. I love gears. Gears are my favorite. Hmm. It's 
wrap it on my lap, why don't I? If you want me to pick a card, let me know. I didn't. Um, I'll pick another one for you. now my hands are covered in stuff you spilled your paint water laughing at me well don't do that I'm gonna have to cut off your fingers Man, my hands are a disaster. This is all your people's fault. <laughs> Had nothing to do with me. I didn't do it. Of course not. Yes, it is fun to make a mess. Okay, so I have my, this here, I, don't, I think it's vintage. I'm not sure, but it's a velvet heart. Um, I want to put that in the middle. Oh, it might help if I turn my hot glue gun on, even though I'm going to hot glue this because it's plastic. And then I'm going to use, oh, excuse me, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for the other th elements. Um, but I'm going to glue that down and then place, I think I want to get rid of the little finding, the little circle on top. pretty easy to do. I don't want it to look like a pendant. I just want it to look like a random heart. Hearts are one of my favorite things too. I love hearts. I'm trying to determine do I want to, it's velvet. It's like a velvet. I don't know if I want to put like a couple of marks on it, but I'm not sure. I might just put some, oh, I know what I'll do. Never mind. Just hold on a minute. This might take a second. I should have thought of this before I screwed around. Actually, this one might work perfectly. Mm, maybe not. Oh, wait, I have not really left in there. Let me look in here. That could be the one I want on chicken dinner. I have an addiction to metal pieces. Um, I love little metal filigrees and such. All right, those are two different metals. There we go. So I could do this in the center. And I've done this before and put that, either that, you let me know, either that, I'm thinking that one I like a lot, or I could do the flower, but I think the flower is too small, and I don't quite think that that looks as nice as the other one. I mean, I, yeah, even if I did them both together, I don't think it would look right. And I could do this like this so it looks square. Or I could, yeah, that won't work. That's not good. Let's do it this way. Now it's just a matter of do I want to do it square like that? Or 
turn it like this. Yeah, I think I like it like this. Yep. I think we got a winner right here. I have to adjust it, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I like that. I'm glad that I made that decision. I didn't even look at the chat. God, I'm a big bat. I probably should have paid attention to the chat because I'm sure you guys, but I'm sure you guys agree with me. I have a feeling. Let me just look in here, make sure there's nothing in here. Uh, I have like this leather studded strap thing. Maybe this can go on the top and bottom. Maybe. Got this one too. Well, that one's purple. That might look nice. Against the, well, we'll leave them out and see what happens. We'll leave them out and see what happens. Because I've also got this one. But that's too much, I think. It's too big. This is my favorite type of thing to do, is canvases with metal pieces and crap all over it. That's my favorite thing to do. I don't do enough of that on my channel, clearly, because you guys have probably almost never seen me do that, because I've always been doing other things, and I always forget to do the one thing that I love the most, which is slapping a bunch of crap onto a canvas. <laughs> That's like my favorite thing to do, and I never do it on my channel. Mostly because it's very time consuming, especially when I do Finnabar style, which is what I do a lot of too, where I do... Um, I'll, I'll put a, a glue, um, a picture of a, a side portrait of a lady and then do her hair in all vintage jewelry. I have some downstairs. I keep me meaning to bring them up. They're actually just sitting on the couch down there. I already dug them out, but I haven't brought them upstairs to show you guys, but they're really cool. And if you want me to, I, I will go run down and get them because they're sitting right on the couch. So I'll leave it up to you if you want me to go get them and show them to you. Um, but anyway, uh, we're going to rub this with the stuff or whatever, but I'm not going to do it too much because I want to leave this kind of brassy. So no, less is not more. More is more. That's my rule. More is more. The poodle pack rule is more is more. Heck no, less is not more. Only in very few situations is less more. I am I am a more is more gal all the way. <laughs> That's just who I am. Says, run, Stacy. <laughs> well, you're only one person who's telling me to go get them. Has to be at least more than one pe person. All right, we're gonna do it this way. And uh oh, hold on, phone's ringing. important. All right, hold on a second and I'll run and go get them. Wait here. Okay. Whoops. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. 
I'm going to move that a second. Okay. All right. There's this one, which is a piece of wood. Um, this is a very grungy, vintage, steampunk mixture. I'll move it close and hopefully you can get some detail. There's a lot going on, but it looks really cool. I know this camera sucks, so I apologize. But this is my forte, is making stuff like this. This is what I love to do. Um, so yeah, there's that. There's that one. Um, and these are all for sale, by the way. I just never put them up. They were at my festival. They were the only ones that didn't sell. Um, uh, and then there's this one. This is my vintage girl, my Finnebar style vintage girl. This is all, most all of it is vintage jewelry, except for a couple of these roses I made. But a lot of stuff is vintage in here. There's vintage stuff all sticking out like this is all vintage. This is vintage. This in here is vintage. That's vintage. That's vintage. That's vintage. That's vintage. That's vintage. This earring, her earring is vintage. That's vintage. That's vintage. That's like mo a lot of it's vintage. <laughs> um. And then, let's see, show you the other one. This one, this one's not, doesn't have vintage stuff on it. This one's just a cute one that I did. Um, it says Journey and Paris, and it's got the Eiffel Tower in the background, music notes, and a bird cage, and flowers, and the flowers move and flop around, and No, I didn't get my printer working. Unfortunately, it's dead. <laughs> R.I.P. printer. Um, that's all right. I'll live until I can sell my house and get one. Um, okay. And then, last but not least, is this one. This one's got even. This one's got a lot of vintage jewelry in it. This one's a very textured. It's got a lot of texture and everything. And then there's just a ton of vintage going on in here. Like just about everything. That's vintage. That's vintage. 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 This white thing underneath that butterfly is vintage. Vintage. Um, vintage. That's got a vintage with an Aurora Borealis in it, which is actually worth a lot of money. Um, <laughs> that's vintage. That's vintage. Um... This whole chain and these little pearls are vintage. These seagulls are vintage. Like, there's a lot of vintage in this one, big time. This is, like, major vintage city. This is what I use my vintage stuff for. I hoard it forever, and then I sit down and start making these canvases. And um, I love making them. You lost your vintage? What do you mean you lost your vintage? No. I still have vintage. If I could pull it out, I'd show you. I have a box about that big full of vintage stuff. Um, some of my good pieces, like, the, I see, I like the vintage with the bling. Like, anything with vintage bling in it, you know, is my favorite. That's my favorite to use on things like this. But, yeah, I love using any vintage junk jewelry in these. Um... I was selling them for $45 for each of the ones like these, like this one and this one. They're $45 each. And then this one, well, we could do this one for $45. I think I had it at $50 because it had so much going on, but really it could probably do $45 because these have vintage in them, so really these should be more money than this, but... This one has a lot of work into it. Well, they all do, I guess. I don't know. So about $45 a piece. And then this one I could do like $30 on because it doesn't have any vintage to it. But, yeah. Yeah. 
these, if you look up on Etsy and find Finnevar style canvases, these are going for over $100. People sell these for a lot of money. I don't sell them for that much money. I sell them for, yeah, I mean, to me, $45 is a lot, I guess, but the first one I showed, this one, oh, 45 for this one, too. This one's heavy because it's wood, solid wood, solid oak. Um, I print out the faces. I found, uh, oh, were you asking me where I found my bits? No, you said Joe. Never mind. Which one, $30? Um, this one I said for $30. The, all the others are $45. Just because they have a lot more elements to them and probably a lot more work. This one I think I did in a video, actually. I did this in a video. I think this was like the last mixed media piece I did in a video. Yeah, I did. I did this in a video. I forgot about that. Yeah, 45 for each of these and the other mixed media one on the wood piece. I'm going to move these out of the way so I don't get crap all over them. Wouldn't want that. Oh crap. Mm -hmm. Let me see that. And the chair was on one of my stencils. Get in there, jackass. Alright, let's go back to this one that we're working on. You you want the first one, Sharon? You can have the first one. That's no problem. Just message me and um, I'll get it worked out with you. All right, let's fabric tack this SOB down. Casey, you did, I've watched. Okay, yeah, I did. You're right, Odette, I did do it. <laughs> I forget what I have done. I don't remember, but I was like, wait a minute, didn't I do a video on that? Duh, I did. I'm a dingbat. I can't remember what I did. I know I didn't do a video on the other ones because they were completed before I started my channel. So, um, let's see. Where am I putting you? Yes. Right there. I'm not good at making things very even. Your birthday's in October. <laughs> yeah, I like old art books. They're cool. Definitely cool. I like to use old art books for um, the color that's in some of the pieces. You can use it collage with it and make some really cool backgrounds with the colored papers. Come on now, don't get stuck to my finger. Stick to each other, not to my fingers. That's how we're going to do it. Hopefully it's going to stay down. I don't know, but we're going to try. I might have to put something heavy on it. But what I'm going to do is take the this here and put a lot of glue on it and let it sit and soak through the other layers of this and hopefully stay down. Not quite the best placement, but not bad. Let's try putting this on top of there. And that on top of there. Let me see. Is that right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's good enough. That'll work. Uh, I don't have anything very heavy. Hmm. What's small and heavy? I don't have anything. Well, honestly, as long as the heart stays down, that's all that matters because that's got enough glue on it to keep everything else glued in place. Why is everybody saying their birthdays are in October? What did I miss? What did I miss? Yours is Monday, Cheryl. Happy birthday, if I don't talk to you. That's that one there. Now I gotta figure out where I wanna place everything else. I wanna stick these like this. Maybe. I'll have to patina them if I do decide to do that. This is where I play and I try to figure out what I want to do with the rest of the pieces. Looks to me like I need some more gears. I prefer them to be brass or bronze. Maybe I need to buy some more gears at some point. I still got to work on Cheryl's journal. Because I've, I'm, well, I've been working on her journal slowly, but I'm going to need more gears for hers because she wants steampunk. Oh, I got to add these. Yeah, these are, these I can never find. I, I got these at Michael's and then I never found them again. And there's only like, I don't know, there's only like 10 in the pack. They're little propellers. I really love these, but unfortunately... They're not easy to come by, apparently. And also clock hands. I don't have that many clock hands left. Ooh, I have two. I think that's all that's left in there. Oh, here's one that's already patinaed a little bit. I think that's just paint, but that's okay. Yeah, so I'll patina these. Yeah, I use gears like they're going out of style. I love gears. Because when I do a project, I put a lot of gears on, and so I end up running out pretty quickly. But luckily, you can get them on eBay fairly cheap. They're not, a, they're not real expensive. When I first started using and buying gears, they were a little more expensive. They were harder to get. But now, I can get them really cheap. But I have dyes too. It's just it said non-porous, and the dyes are made out of paper die cuts.
Are we still talking about birthdays? Goodness. Did you say your birthday was Monday, Cheryl? Well, that means that the next mixed media mashup, I'll have to sing happy birthday for you. My hands. And this stuff is textury, so it doesn't want to come off as easy. <laughs> My mom was born in October, October 20th. I got it all under my nail. It looks like I have fungus under my nail. <laughs> I'm walking around with a fungus on my nails. Goodness gracious. Gross. All right, well, let's dry these a little bit. That would take away from the heart. I don't want to do that. I thought about it for a second, but I said no. Now that one, I don't mind doing that too. I could do the center like that. That I could do. That might be an idea. Do the clock hands in the center. Do them like that. Oh, 
glue. I can, they're not going to stay there until I glue them down, though. I still feel like I need some more gears. Do I want the big, big one? No. I do want that. Some more patina on some more gears. I didn't think I was going to use this many gears. I was like, oh, I'll just put a few on. It always ends up being more. That's okay. I love gears. Steampunk, one of my favorite styles to do things. You guys came from Mixed Media Mashup, and I sat here and decided to do a steampunk canvas. If you need me to pick more cards, let me know. Like, put it in caps and say, pick some more cards, lady. Like, I gladly will pick more cards for you. I'm just slacking over here with this because I, I don't know, I got enthralled by adding more crap and more crap. Can't help it. Thanks, Lori. I love it, too. I think it's cool. It's cool. Oh, yeah. I was going to do the black. Wait a minute. Hmm. Nah, I'm not going to do that because I'd rather have the gears spread out towards the edge. Like so. Actually, I'm going to switch that out. Put this chunkier gear. There we go. And we're going to put that there. And we're going to put. I think that looks good. Something like that. Except the hands are going to go kind of there and there, but obviously not there. So can you see? Pick more cards. Okay, got it. Add gesso. So you can add black or white gesso to sections. Use stamps. So if you have, if you don't have a whole lot of texture, you can use some stamps. Add some acrylic paint. So you can 
add some gesso and then in the areas where you added gesso you can put some paint over top of it to kind of give it some more vibrancy and I'll pick one more if you need more let me know add add dots so you can go around making little dots little either white dots if you have a dark background or black dots if you have a um, if you have a light background All right, now I gotta glue all this crap down. It's that time. I'm gonna start with you, sir. Starting with you, sir. I don't know which way I had that, but we're going to do it that way. And it's going to go there. Oh, my leg's falling asleep. Woo! Definitely not fun. That corner's done. Start with this one. I'm going to move that over just a little bit like that. Hands are sticky. So very sticky.
this way. Well, keep it a little bit straighter or else I'll screw up. And I won't put things back where they belong if I don't keep it a little bit on the straight side. one off of here and put this one over here. And take this off of here. Put that one there. Put this big one. No, not there. There. I changed my mind. I changed my mind, which I do pretty often. Sorry, I'm so quiet. I'm thinking. Can't you smell the smoke? Coming out of my brains. Concentrating very hard. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. This one there. If anybody wants to know what type of glue I'm using, I'm using Fabri-Tac, which is awesome for light metal pieces, even heavy metal pieces. Fabri-Tac's pretty badass, and it's non—it's not as toxic. It's not like you know E6000, which I would use if the if the pieces were super heavy or something. Like when I do the the Finnabar pieces, if they have a lot of heavy vintage pieces I'll use the E6000 but for this this thing will hold and ugh, never let go 
That's what I like about Fabri-Tac. It's not just the fabric glue. Thanks, Lynn. Ugh, my underneath of my nails feel so disgusting because I've got so much stuff stuck underneath of them. Gross! Alright. Get off my finger. Alright, how did I have this going? This one here. And this one up here. And this one here. And that one there. Okay. Hmm. because I have that like that. I don't want anything to be exactly the same. Okay, I think everything is glued down. I'll find out in a second. Nope, those aren't. Well, those, and neither is this. I didn't glue this one down either. Okay, I placed it there, but I didn't glue it. All right, and those I'm going to put down in a minute. to get some of the glue and crap off my fingers because it's driving me nuts. It's getting all caked up on there. messy job but somebody's got to do it all right let's see I'm gonna want this like this and like this sounds good to me I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get those stuck down to stay like that I'll have to put something under here That should work. There we go. Alright, that's what we'll do. We'll put that there temporarily. back here. Okay. I'm trying to do this in the least messy way I can.
you know, that's not going in the middle. I tried it. I didn't like it. <laughs> I tried it. I didn't like it. I will find something else for the very center of that. I'm trying to figure out what, but I'll find it, I promise. Just got to get that to stay up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do I have? Look in here. Nothing in there. need more cards let me know oh I have an idea Ooh, I have a really good idea actually hold on a second got my jar of junk. Dump it in my lap here. Is it not in here? No. no. Kind of. Ah, oh, Jesus. Why is everything going to be difficult? Everything is difficult. Come on. There we go. I wanted this chain. I don't want the rest of it. I can't seem to get it off of there. There we go. could cut that off I would but I'd, that will work well I might like that chain better Why don't I? Too big. Alright, they're going everywhere. find something to put in the center. Um, having issues. I have to look. Here's where the perfectionist comes out. I need to find the perfect piece for the center. It must be perfect. Let me see. I got in that little drawer of tricks down here. All this crap I've got. Wait, I'll show you. This is my. Oh my god, it's so heavy. Let me move this out of the way. This is my 
box of vintage pieces. And then I've got those things that I was pulling down before because I can't fit any more in here. But this is stuff. Like, people will send me stuff in Happy Mail. Like, that's, like, my favorite thing to get in Happy Mail is, like, a bag like this full of junk jewelry and buttons and old stuff. So I throw it into this box. And then I pick through it when I make one of those canvases. And I... And a lot of... And this... But then, uh... Like, some of this stuff is jewelry. Like, these used to be my earrings, which are connected on here. These used to be my earrings, I think. The, yeah, these were my earrings. And they started to tarnish, so I threw them in here, because now I use them in my junk jewelry. And, uh, like, these, they would, like, tarnish after a while, because they're cheapy. And then this was mine, too. I used to love this necklace. I got it from India. I ordered it from India. But now it's got all kinds of good pieces on it that I can use, pull it apart, and what have you. So, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Like all this. This was sent to me in a Happy Mail. So, I just, this was my bracelet <laughs> that I used to have wear. This is my other bracelet. So all this stuff can be used to make a canvas. Here's my earrings I used to wear. I used to wear big earrings and big costume jewelry. I loved it. It was all cheap crap. But, mm, yeah, this whole thing is full of crap like that. Some of it's mine. Some of it's vintage. Some of it's not. Some of it's happy mail. Some of it's junk. I don't know. I need a piece to go in the center. A small piece. What's this? That might work. Yep, that might work. More seagulls. <laughs> Yeah, I'm itching. I'm going to have to do another Finnabar style canvas soon because I'm starting to get the itch for it. They just take me a long time to do because I'm, I have to stop and start and stop and start several times. So like vintage pieces like this, this is what gets me excited. Come on, focus, jackass. There we go. Things with like bling, even though there's a few missing over here. I don't care. I love the the old bling and stuff and like this. Old pin. Love that stuff. Oh, so exciting. Here's this. This isn't vintage, but it's cool. I thought about making that into a necklace for myself, actually. And like these. So cool. This is one of my favorites. This has all Aur vintage Aurora Borealis crystals in it. Isn't that gorgeous? My favorite is Aurora Borealis. Whether it's the crystals or the, the rhinestones. The vintage rhinestones that are Aurora Borealis. Those are my favorite. One of these just might be the answer. I might be keeping that out. So look at this. This has got a couple little Aurora Borealis um, actual rhinestones in it. Right there on the end. And down the middle of it. I love that. That's like my favorite thing. It just reminds me of 
you know, like when my grandmother had her jewelry, you know, and stuff, and I would go try on her jewelry. Come on, focus. This camera is so bad. I couldn't make it any easier for this thing to focus, and it still won't. God. Yeah, these are like my prize craft things. I love my vintage crap. I don't pull it out that often, and when I do, it's it's. I'll sit here and look at it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. So that's why I don't pull it out very often because I get lost. It's like Christmas every time I pull it out because I get lost in the pieces because they're just so freaking cool. Look at that. Just a random rhin two crystal rhinestone things. Focus, you freaking camera. Really? Really? There you go. But stuff like that is just awesome. Hmm. I wish that was flatter on the bottom. I would put that on. I don't want to risk breaking it. Okay. I'll stop boring you to death with my junk. put that on there. I should zoom you in a little bit. Might be helpful. I forgot to look at the chat. Did you guys need more cards? It's either going to be that or one of these. Trying to, I can't follow the chat very well. Glue stuck on me, so I don't know whether I want to leave that little ball there and just call it a day, or I put that on there, which I think might be too puffy. I don't know. Seriously, camera. You gotta be kidding me. Worst camera ever. Hello? Really? Like, seriously, just won't focus at all. No focusing. This has got to be a joke. I wish there was a way to manually focus this thing. Like, it seriously just refuses to focus at all. <laughs> I find it hard to believe that people speak so highly of this stupid camera. 
I think I'm just going to leave it at the little ball. What do you guys think? Humpy McJackass is more like stupid needs to go in the garbage McJackass. That's already on there. Good lord. Um, oh, yeah, we want to do that. I need to go get my other chain because I want to go around the heart with it. Should have chose to do that before I put the hands on, but, you know. You know. Oh my goodness. I got another one. Uh, this one's more of a necklace, but I don't care. I think this needs to go around here. Alright. We're going to find out how much we need of this. And then we're going to patina it a little bit. Without knocking the hands off and everything else. I need to hold this closer to me so I can see what I'm looking at here. What's going on in the chat? Yeah, I wish I could put a brat in there, but I can't poke anything through there, so the ball's going to have to go in there. I don't have anything else small enough. I don't want to put like a gemstone because this is too grungy, steampunky for a gemstone. Okay, now we need to try and get this
going to be a little hard to get in there. Hmm. All right. The only other thing I want to do is add some micro beads. Um in a couple little areas now that I have some micro beads. That chain, that ball chain was a really good idea. I just need to put some patina on that little center. I'll probably go over some other things. What do you think so far? The only thing I want to do is put some black around the edges and some uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Microbeads in a couple areas. I think it looks badass. Are you talking to me? Cut off the fasteners? Are you talking to somebody else? I don't know what fasteners you mean. What fasteners do you mean? Mm. I may let this dry a bit before I add the before I add any more um, any microbeads or anything because did I ever put this one down? No. I'm wondering why it was loose. If I would have put it down, it wouldn't be loose. I forgot one. It was just sitting there, stuck underneath the other one. I'm a dingbat. I don't know what I was waiting for. All the rest of them are down. But I got everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, blue eyes. You should go in your junk drawer. Go get your old junk jewelry that you don't wear anymore. Go through your go through that first because that's what these little hearts and everything came off of a bracelet. So that's the best thing to do is go through all your junk jewelry because I'm sure you got stuff, you know, laying around that you don't wear anymore and take it and pull it apart and start using it in your in your uh, canvases and in your journaling and stuff like that. In your junk drawer in your kitchen, everybody's got a junk drawer with all kinds of crap in it. Pull out some stuff in there. You might find some stuff that you can use. Little metal chain pieces like this or, you know, just junk. I mean, I have junk galore and I stick things in jars and I use this for bigger canvases. I'll glue like these big fuses on. Like I'll put this on like a huge canvas and I'll paint it and distress it. Go in your garage, get screws and nuts and bolts.
You sold all your all your what at a yard sale? All your junk? Haha, <laughs> Lori. <laughs> I'm the shed shedizzle. <laughs> You're funny. I'm the shiznit. <laughs> Shit dizzle. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, to cut off the back of the brads. Yeah, yeah, I could have done that, but I like the dimension of that little ball. It kind of gave it a little bit more sticky outiness. I kind of like that. Yeah. And then when it's really dry, I'll go over the, I'll go over that, and then I'll put some um, microbeads in a few places, but I think I'm gonna, and I'm not gonna do any more today on it because I want to let this set for a while because I'm gonna knock those hands off and I'm gonna be pissed off. Yeah, that's a good place to go, too, is going in rummage sales, garage sales, flea markets. Look for, a lot of times, some people at flea markets and stuff, what they'll do is they'll have, like, a whole box of stuff that they don't, you know, and they might pick through some of it to sell at the flea market, but then they'll just leave the box laying there, and basically, they'll sell the box full of vintage and crap jewelry you know, for like cheap, you know, 20 bucks, you can get the entire box and it'll be like a big box full of stuff. So if you go to a flea market and you see that somebody has a bunch of junk jewelry spread out, say, do you have any junk, like other junk jewelry that you don't, that you're looking to get rid of, like a box full of stuff? Because sometimes they don't want to untangle necklaces and stuff like that. Well, I don't care if it's tangled. I don't use the necklaces. I just pull all the pendants off and all this stuff and usually there's other stuff connected with it that's how I've gotten some stuff is because people don't feel like going through their boxes to get all that crap out and they'll just pick out a few pieces because they'll get them from estate sales or somebody will donate them or junk it or whatever and they'll they'll you know just get what they can get out of it and then they don't bother going through the rest of the box so the whole box is full of good stuff so you know when you go to a flea market or a rummage sale look for that stuff look and see if like you know somebody that's sitting behind their table has a box that has a bunch of crap in it that might be junk jewelry and they just have it there and they might want to sell all of it restart Lori you need to refresh your page if you're having problems. Just hit the refresh. Yeah, you could do that too, like Janet said. You go to your, you know, your local um, thrift stores. You can, you know, give them a donation to hold on to the unusable stuff, like the broken jewelry and you know, stuff like that, the stuff that's like, you know, if it, instead of a pair of earrings, you just get one earring or whatever. Yeah, big canvases take me a long time to do, but I love doing them. I just, like, I've been commissioned to do some big, big canvases, and I tell them, you know, you're going to have to give me a couple of months to get it together, because sometimes it takes me a while. Because I like to work on it, you know, a little bit every day until I get it done, and sometimes that could take two months to do. Something like this is pretty easy because I kind of knew what I wanted to do. 
I wanted to do something kind of steampunky when I started it, which is why I painted gessoed it black. Well, it depends, Liz, on what, or Lynn, on what they're what they have in those jars. They might have, you know, if they have um, a lot of vintage jewelry that's signed or that has a lot of aurora borealis or crystals in it, then mm, sometimes they'll go for thirty dollars for even just. I have a, I have some vintage jewelry. I have it's worth one piece is worth thirty dollars. I mean, so it depends because th that stuff is like. Some of it's worth a lot of money. I have two moons that are Aurora Borealis vintage and they're completely intact with all their stones. That pair of moons can be made into earrings or a necklace or something. It probably used to be a pair of earrings, but the only thing that's left of it is the moons and there is a connector on the back to hook it onto something. But I can guarantee you that that set of moons, which actually I can show you one of one of them. I have another one on the other side of the room. I put it on something, but it, not not permanently on something. Let's see if I can get it out. This here. I have two of these. These are like my prized possessions. I will not make anything with these because... I have the other one too. I have it on actually a little witch's hat, but it's not affixed like permanently, permanently. It's lightly glued on because I did it for a Halloween thing, but all right. Jesus camera, seriously? Like it just refuses to focus. Ugh, I hate this camera. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it with all my might. I hate this camera. It, it it's just stupid are you capable of focusing for even a there you go it's all aurora borealis it's got like the little connector right here i don't know what it went on but it has like a connector here a connector here and a connector here but I have the pair of them, which this video camera is not doing it justice, but they are so gorgeous and I absolutely love these and I just keep them and hoard them because I love them so. Yeah, I know that that's an expensive, those are expensive. I know that those two pieces are probably worth close to, close to a hundred dollars, I bet you, because I've looked online for comparable things and uh, they are very, they are very like, they were better than pieces I seen that were going for a hundred dollars. So I am going to guess that they, the two of them together, the two pieces together are probably worth about a hundred dollars because they are original vintage Aurora Borealis. They're worth money, but I will not sell them. I love them too much. Oh, um, um, 1920s. It, it might be. It might be a 1920s belt buckle. You're, it, it could be, but there's two of them, so I'm not sure. And they came together, so I, I'm thinking that they came on something that there's two of. I, I don't know. I thought maybe earrings. Maybe they were hooked to a bigger earring or something. I don't know. Or maybe they were some sort of button on some sort of jacket, and they were just some sort of fancy special button type of thing or something. I don't know. But like I said, there's two of them. Yeah, they might be custom. They're awesome, whatever they are. Yeah, that's what I. That's the time period I thought of. I thought around the 20s or 30s. That's what I. That's where you know, based on what they look like and what I've looked up online, the type of metal, the way the metal looks, it's very, it's very um. Very similar to the things I was looking up that was like the, the, the 20s, actually the teens and the 20s. Um, very similar look, um, the shape, everything. Um, but, and they were worth a lot of money. 
they were like the, the cheapest pair was like a hundred dollars so I was saying just being conservative I was saying okay then these are at least worth a hundred dollars straps of a gown that that could be very very yeah that could be part of a gown yeah I don't think halter tops were popular back then <laughs> but they're, they're really cool, whatever they are. I really like them. I would like to, I'll eventually take them to a jeweler and have them look at them, but we'll see. I'm sure a jeweler would tell be able to tell me exactly where they're from. Which one? This one or this one? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the the one on the right, I just like the fact that it was a heart, a peace sign, and a and a treble clef all together in one. And this one symbolizes my husband we're not together anymore but we got them after we separated he's got the key I have the heart the heart is broken it's got fragments and breakage in it to represent the fact that my heart was broken but he will always have the key to my heart because we were together pretty much since we were 16 not technically but technically I can't explain it we were with other people at times, but we always were together, if that made sense. We were always best friends. We were always together. So we've been like around each other for a very long time. And so even though we split up, we share, we still share a connection, even though he's the jackass. Not as much as we used to, but as over the past like couple years, he's changed a lot more and he's turned into a real jerk, but... I don't regret my tattoo at all. Yeah, a lot of costume jewelry can be worth a lot, especially if it's like pre-1960s costume jewelry. Even some 1960s jewelry, I've seen some things. You have some of your great grandmother's costume jewelry. Oh wow, that's probably cool. <clears throat> I wish I had some of my grandmother's jewelry. All right, I'm assuming that we are done and everybody made their piece. I hope you guys will post pictures of what you came up with. Um, I know that I went off on a tangent and started doing all this in the middle of like picking cards, but you know what, if it wasn't for picking the cards that I chose, this wouldn't look the way it does. So even though I didn't pick that many cards as usually I pick a lot more, but I kind of got sidetracked and focused in on this, <laughs> but I really like it. I haven't done a good mixed media piece in a while. I was going to put, like, I thought, well, maybe I'll put a word or a quote or something, but honestly, I don't think it needs it. I think it's good just the way it is. I think I, if I'm going to call it anything, I'd call it Time Heals. Because it's got like hearts all over it. Like time heals your heart. Well thanks everybody for coming out and hanging out with me. And doing some mixed media mashup fun stuff. 
<laughs> yeah, I was in my zone. <laughs> That's true. I hope you guys had fun, and I will see you again on Friday night for um, the pajama party. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yeah, don't forget to give this a thumbs up. And, um, yeah. I'm going to take it off being public for a little while to give it time to process so YouTube can process it. And then I'll put it back up when it's processed because if I let it go now YouTube will make it skip around so that if somebody goes to watch the video they'll see like it'll start in the middle and it'll only show like 20 minutes of it so I have to let it process and take it offline so that it can fully process um, before I then I put it back up public like maybe to like tonight later tonight I'll put it back up public so I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I will talk to you later. Poodle Pack out.